Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Thanks. Steve, for inviting us. Um, we, Jim uh, and I worked together kind of remotely. Jim said, uh, let's, let's run off to a charity shop. Um, and I was looking at a big storm uh, coming in over the field in front of my little tiny office. And I was thinking, my nearest charity shop is 20 miles away. Um, let's do this. Um, so Jim's going to read a bit, and I'm going to read a bit. Um, start us off. Cook. So in my charity shop, I found um, two books in particular that interested me. Um, they were Computing for the Old Fifties, <laughs> and A History of Polar Exploration. I decided to use a Markov chain generator, which sounds very pretentious. It's essentially the thing you use in your phone for predictive text. And I put these two texts side by side to see what would happen as I fed them gently into the machine. This poem is called, is, is, is in eight parts, and it's called Captain Scott and the Over 50s Computer Club. <laughs> One. I found myself hung in a snowdrift. I am used to the dark. As we had been making progress before in the all day white, I was used to being shown sufficient facts by means of a piled up store of wood or the devil of the weather. Often the hours crept against the light. I am interested in science, and in particular, in stressful images. At night, whole documents travel through my mind, both grouped and somehow underestimated. I saw photos that once I would have ignored. I tried to cancel my mind's drift towards the ice cliffs, the styles it wanted to format, as if it was trying to make everything appear like all one glittering snowfield. The tools to go on, animals, and on hummocks, my answerless hallows, the flat panel liquid display of Wilson's shadow like an unpowered airship. I rarely slept heavily, seldom nodded off, as if someone were shuffling high-definition films against an ever-scrolling canvas. If you were to ask my view, I've rolled it up beneath the trailing store of numbers of miles of footprints in dragging myself alongside the sledge. Small are the number of small crevasses. This morning, there was a peculiar rustling. Snowy petrels, I have to say, are the closest thing to fairies that I've ever seen. Scott fingered his iced-up buttons with useless fingers. There are so many different ways to check your spelling of God. Could you do me a favor, please? Could you all put out your phones? Mm -hmm. Go to your YouTube app. Um, I'm just going to ask you to enter a couple of words into YouTube, and uh, if you would mind. Hey. Uh, you want to use my phone? I don't know how to use it. I can give it to you if you want to hold it. Is that okay? Okay. Um, can you type Ode to Virilio into your phones, please? Ode to Virilio, so V-I-R-I-L-I-O. Um, I'm holding them in my hands. I call them bits. They're little bits of from obituaries that I've been gathering for a while. Little lines I've cut out, little newspaper bits. So if you play the video, I'm going to start in, let's say, five seconds. And if you could hold the phone and make it full screen, that would be ideal. What's this? What's this? Sorry. V-I-R-I-L-I-O. That's great. Should I start? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Of course, I got this circle going on here. Always wanted to become involved in the real world as lived by other people and see life from their perspective. He left school at 14, a pacifist during the Second World War. His job, as he put it, was collecting body parts from bombed buildings. Asked in an interview what was the worst rejection he had suffered from a publisher, he said it was by Oxford University Press in the late 50s. Some of your poems are not poems at all. Asked if he had any regrets about pursuing a career as a poet, he replied that he had none, but like Coleridge, advised that one should also take a day job. Before becoming <coughs> initially reluctant to political abstraction and more to flesh and blood and imagination. She was back in her element. How did Jesus ever manage without fighting cabinets, she once remarked. It must be difficult to be a dictator's wife. Do you support your spouse? Push him? Confront him? Contradict him? Balance him out? Stick to the housekeeping or get him to take charge of that while you shop for shoes. He is survived by a niece. Two. I have reasoned that my computer needs music. The tent near crushed by snow cried out. Excel can help by using a formula for the fog that hides the sun's high definition. You can store wood by giving it a memorable name. On the floor, our dogs sleep, highlighted red by the fire, filed together these tough, beautiful images. When fishing next to Wilson, I feel less unpowered and find it easy to live off the strength in the margins. Three. Much like non-responsive programs, though we try, we can barely run simultaneously. Four. I wonder how best to communicate, to not just shut down, but to pull out a thermometer. Someone asked where I'd been. After restarting once or twice, I said simply, I was peeling off the delicate state of feeling like a mouse on Earth. Five. A handy hint. If you recognize your name in a blizzard, don't be too forward in answering. Six. This morning, I fed the webcams, sent home moving images. Ice falls have long been at eye level. Like email attachments, the ponies deal well with the unknown. I ran the size in kilobytes and megabytes of the mind's hypothermia-influenced software. The wind fell calm. The wild mountains that were almost certainly not there extended into a sound file profile shadow. I drew a tick in the snow for yes. During the day, the moon turned the color of a selected icon. Increasingly, I realized my lips and devices are accountable. Eight. If you want to, you can sleep in a balaclava anytime you wish. The key is whether you can sleepwalk. Throughout five or six miles directed anxiously, my body's moderate window of energy allowed me to reach Saddleback Island. Finally, I smeared away my icy breath's pace for nervy time. Once changed, saved, our shattered crew made the next step. We stretched out, harnessed our life vests, and hit the end key, clicked, refreshed, restored, without freezing, without waking, without freezing, without waking. Thank you.